Welcome back friends to the class number 44. In the previous video, we have discussed the working capital gap method of MPBF norms. I, I haven't explained one topic to you yet that was related to uh, the improvement of current ratio. The improvement of current ratio is of utmost importance if you are looking to calculate the working capital eligibility of the borrower. Whether it is a turnover method, whether it is MPBF 1 or MPBF 2 or drawing power, the current ratio has direct link with all of these methods, right? So how do we improve current ratio? First of all, uh, you must understand that when we study that, studied the turnover method, the turnover method has no direct link with the current ratio in itself because turnover methods just say to us that you do 20% of the turnover and that 20% of the turnover is your final loan eligibility. It doesn't speak about any current assets, current liabilities or any other item that is related to current ratio. But practically speaking, when you are working in a bank, if, if you, even if you are following a turnover method for eligibility assessment, the current ratio of your case should be more than 1. Current ratio cannot be less than 1. It should always be more than 1 even if you are doing the turnover method. <coughs> Sorry. Now coming to the working capital gap method. The working capital gap method that you have uh, studied in the previous video, which is 75% uh, of working capital gap, that is the final loan eligibility. And what is working capital gap? That is current assets minus current liabilities excluding bank finance. That means the current assets should be greater than current liabilities. And that itself says that current ratio should be more than 1. Right. So since in working capital gap method, we are dealing with current assets, current liabilities directly. So the current ratio has direct implication over the eligibility in working capital gap method. And similar situation you will see in working capital uh, MPBF method 2 of Tendon Committee also. Right. So now question is how do we improve the current ratio? So first recall the formula of current ratio current ratio is equal to current assets upon current liabilities. Current assets are in numerator and current liabilities are in denominator. And there are three more uh, most popular ways of improving the current ratio. The first method is the long term funds infusion. This is the most famous way, most famous way and most practical way to improve your current ratio. This is the way which is suggested by most of the banks to you that you should you you should infuse the long term funds in the business to improve the current ratio right and this is the question is this question is asked in many credit interviews or sales team interviews as well right but we can bifurcate the long term capital uh, long term funds infusion into two parts from where these long term funds can come from where the borrower the owner of the business can raise these long term funds the first source is own funds he brings in the own capital into the business and the second source is he goes into the market and take help of outsiders for for long term infusion in his business and out of these two the infusion of own funds is the most suggested way of improving the current ratio right when I say that he must infuse his own funds, then how will it improve the current ratio? So let us understand by a simple journal entry. Suppose a promoter brings 1 lakh rupees as cash in the business. As cash in the business. Promoter brings 1 lakh rupees cash in the business. So what will happen? His cash balance will increase. His cash balance will increase. But on the other on the other sides, since he has bring in the funds as a promoter, as a uh, you know proprietor or partner or a uh, shareholder, so his capital balance will also increase. So his capital balance in the books of account on liability side will also increase. And you know very well that cash is a current asset. Cash is a current asset, while capital is not a current liability it is not a current liability so what will happen is in this in this formula the current ratio will go current assets will go upward the numerator will, amount will increase 
but there will be no change in the denominator amount because there are no there is no increase in the current liabilities portion so if we divide the revised current assets with the existing level of current liabilities your ratio will improve than before so this is the best test way and the most recommended way of increasing uh, of improving your current ratio so when we talk about the own funds then you must remember that there is a work, one concept of quasi equity as well there is one concept of quasi equity as well that i have already discussed in promoter margin uh, topic with you the promoter can bring in quasi equity as well if he don't have his own funds in his saving account from by quasi equity he can uh, bring the funds from his family from his friends right from his any other close relatives so these individuals give the funds for long term purpose to the business and the journal entry is almost the same cash gets increased and instead of capital their name comes up suppose he has taken quasi equity from his wife mr a has taken quasi equity from his wife mrs a then cash comes in and mrs a unsecured loan appears in the balance sheet right and these unsecured loans since they are treated as quasi equity by the banker they will not be counted as part of the current liabilities so the effect will be same your current assets will increase but the current liabilities will remain constant they, therefore the own funds contribution can be by way of infusing own capital or by taking the quasi equity quasi capital now what do we understand when we talk about long term fund infusion from outside sources the most popular source is the bankers source is bankers you go to a banker you ask them to give you a very long term loan that is not repayable in next 12 months or repayable on demand suppose you are you have asked the bank to give you a lap loan of 10 years tenure so you need to return that money in next 10 years so whatever funds that you have got suppose you have got the lap of rupees 1 lakh from hdfc bank so what will be the journal entry you have received the cash from the bank so your cash will increase since the funds are given to you by the bank and hdfc lap will appear as second entry in your books now this hdfc lap is taken for 10 years period it is taken for 10 years period so this is a long term liability for you long term liability so this is a long term liability this is a current asset so your current assets balance will increase but current liabilities will not change much right so by doing this your current ratio will automatically improve if your current ratio is improving your current assets are rising your current liabilities are coming down or remaining stagnant your working capital gap will automatically be increasing it will all, uh, the working capital gap is what Uh, current assets minus current liabilities excluding bank finance the more the current assets and same if the current liabilities are same the working capital gap will also increase hence 75% of working capital gap which is your final eligibility will also increase so in long term fund infusion by way of own funds by way of outside funds will significantly improve your current ratio and will it will significantly improve your working capital gap and your final loan eligibility that is mpbf right but taking funds from outside this is kind of a borrowing only this is not your own funds this is a borrowing only and this is very least preferred way this is very least preferred way of infusing long term funds into the business right this is the way which is suggested in a case in which bank has overall comfort on the uh, party bank wants to fund the party but the party somehow doesn't have their own money by way of own capital or quasi equity to infuse in the business but banks are so much comfortable on the client that they some they want to onboard the client into their bank they want to give loan to the uh, client so they may accept these outside funds as well as part of long term infusion in the business right so this is one way of improving your current ratio now the second way of improvement of current ratio is conversion of stock into debtors now this method may sound strange strange to many people how will the, that improve your current ratio this is a, a very simple uh, a very simple thing to understand the stock is valued at at cost 
the stock is valued at cost for example you have spent rupees 100 rupees 100 to make a shirt now this shirt is in your inventory is appearing in your stock at 100 rupees value right so the current assets are for rupees 100 rupees value for example right suppose you have sold this shirt you have sold this shirt for rupees 120 for rupees 120 to mr a right now mr a has asked you to pay, uh, has requested you that he will pay that 120 rupees after 60 days 90 days whatsoever your terms and conditions with mr a are so these 120 rupees will appear as debtors will appear as debtors now this 100 rupees which was appearing as stock in your current assets will get deleted deleted and it will be replaced by the debtors of rupees 120 and what the difference of these 20 rupees represent this is a profit this is the profit that you have earned by selling the shirt and this profit is part of your reserve and surplus or capital you can say so this 20 rupees profit 20 rupees profit is not part of your current liabilities right so automatically if you do this your current assets which were earlier 100 rupees will now appear as 120 rupees while there will be no change in the current liabilities so automatically your current ratio shall improve if you convert your stock into debtors right that means you sell your stock and the receivable amount which is we called debtors if you convert your stock into debtors which means you sell your stock and the receivable amount if you convert your stock into receivable amount then your current ratio can improve right but practically this is very least uh, of least practical usage this is good for uh, your interview if someone asks you in interview that how do you improve the current ratio you can uh, you can suggest this also along with this first you need to suggest this then you can suggest this way also to improve for improvement of current ratio but when you work practically on cmi data when you practically uh, make the mpbf right then this method is of almost no use to you no use to you so this is only for your knowledge purpose now the third way is a very practical way which is based on a mathematics only you need not to do anything you just need to change some data so which can improve your current ratio this is a way which is practically used by me also but there is one one restriction this method you can use only in the projections only in the projections you cannot edit or change past data uh, by using this method so this method has limited applications it can be used for projections only right so before applying this method you need to totally understand the business model and after applying these mathematical changes whatever the figures of current assets or current liabilities are appearing the revised figures after implying applying these changes these figures of current assets and current liabilities should be justifiable and should truly reflect the actual business model of the client they should not be any vague figures for example uh, first let's understand what is the way to uh, increase the current ratio by this method so suppose your current assets are rupees 150 your current liabilities are rupees 100 and your current ratio is 1.5x right now you want to improve the current ratio and what will you do i am suggesting that you just reduce the current assets by rupees 50 and you reduce the current liabilities by rupees 50 you reduce both of these items by 50 rupees and there will not be any challenge in the total of balance sheet because asset side is reduced by 50 rupees and liability side is also reduced by 50 rupees so the balance sheet will also always tally right so if you deduct rupees 50 from both of these sides then what will be your current ratio your current assets will be 100 current liabilities will be 50 your current ratio will come 2x from 1.5x to 2x so it has automatically improved by marrying the by merely changing the size of current assets and current liabilities this is practically used by us also in today's time right but there is a catch how can you need to justify the levels of 100 and rupees 50 there cannot be vague assumptions suppose if someone has stock of rupees 100 and creditors of rupees uh, suppose uh, 50 you cannot say that his stock can be rupees 10 yeah or his stock can be rupees 0 
or his creditors will be rupees zero. You cannot say that. You whatever figures you take to increase that current ratio, these revised figures should clearly be justifiable and should be related to the business model of the client, actual or projected one, right? So if we do the calculation on other side, if the current ratio is on negative side, 0 0.6, right? Then you have to do the reverse of this. Earlier you have deducted 50 rupees, now you need to add 20 rupees. So you add 20 here, add 20 here, 80 divided by 120, your current ratio has improved from 0 0.6 to 0 0.67x, right? Automatically it has improved by just increasing the size of current assets and current liabilities. So this is one another way of improvement of your current ratio, but this has very limited application. You cannot do very much big changes by using this method. You practically you can do only some point wise changes, point some little decimal changes by using this method, right? So use this method cautiously and with proper justification, right? And I hope you have understood this video. We will meet in the next video with a new topic. Till then, thank you very much.